We are looking at reading disabilities, dyslexia, which is a severe reading disability, as well as mild to moderate reading disabilities. And we're taking a journey inside to the brain, looking at reading from a neurological perspective. Step one or idea one, knowledge, all our knowledge, is stored in the cortex, the cerebral cortex, or the neocortex, all these wrinkly little things, all the knowledge you have gained, all the experiences are stored there. The brain is essentially a memory machine. You have stored everything you have learned and experienced right there, and you use that to predict what is and what might be. And I'll talk more about that in a little bit later, but no, the brain uses three cueing systems to provide clues as to what a word, sentence, or idea might be. As you're reading, as you're reading the words right there on the page, you're not processing each individual letter. You are using minimal letter cues. Instead, you are, and you are using three cueing systems to recognize words, semantic, syntactic, and graphophonetic cueing systems. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that. But the words appear on the page, and we use not one, but three phonological processing, word, uh, letters and sounds, syntax, grammar, word order, and semantics. A little bit more about that. We recognize words as we read. We do not sound them out. We do not process each and every individual letter. If we did, it would take us forever to read. All right, the three cueing systems, semantics. The monkey ate a, we use meaning or the context of the sentence or the knowledge stored in our head to fill that in. We can say with absolute certainty that the monkey ate a banana. Semantics is the grammatical structure of the language. We use grammar, word order, uh, sentence structure, tense and plurality, all those things to cue our brain as to what the next word might be. The brain does not recognize or does not make sense of the world in terms of letters, but, in, but it instead looks at ideas and uses minimal letter cues. When we look at eye movement research, we will show you how, it, how it's not possible to look letter by letter and read and create meaning with text. These are all strategies used to help children develop their uh, syntactical cueing system. Morphemic analysis is simply analyzing prefix, suffixes, affixes, and endings. Daily oral language, where you put a sentence on the board and you have grammar mistakes or word order mistakes, sometimes punctuation, and students have to come up and correct, and you talk about the language that way. Sentence combining is where you give two sentences and they have to combine them and still retain meaning. Writing, 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 as much writing as possible gives children a sense of the structure of the language. I also recommend writing to text software. It's free on the internet machine. You write, it sounds out each word as you write it, and then it plays it back. Gives you a sound of the language. Reading, 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 and more reading. You develop an innate sense of grammar and word order. Peer editing, where two or three people work together to help edit a peer's writing. And then more reading, and I really mean it. Reading is the cure for almost everything. The third queuing system, graphophonemic. Grapho refers to symbols. Phonics refers to sound. Now, here's the importance of letters not. Phonics is not the key to unlocking the reading process. I think this is a wonderful group. You are great teachers. You are all truly amazing human beings. You are also good people. Eventually, most people can create meaning with this. Now I retain the first letter and the last letter and mixed up all the individual letters in between. The importance of letters not text with all the initial vowels removed. Once upon a time there was a handsome prince, he lived in a... We can create meaning with that. All the vowels are moved except if it was an initial vowel. How important are vowel sounds? Not very. Vowels versus consonants. 
Here are just the vowel sounds. Create meaning with that, would you? Oh, no meaning you say? All right. The Green Bay Packers are the best football team in the NFL. They have a great quarterback. Hmm, how important are those gosh darn vowels? There is a two-way flow of information. Visual data moves from the eyes to the thalamus. That's the relay station right there. And from the thalamus up to the cortex. The cortex is the part of the brain responsible for higher thinking and memory. All right? In the eyes, thalamus up there. Okay? However, recent brain imaging studies found that 10 times more information flows from the cortex to the thalamus than from the thalamus up. By the way, here is the old outdated bottom-up phonological view of reading. That input data from the text goes to the thalamus. We process letters. That's the outdated view. All right? That information comes, text, to the thalamus. We use the three cueing systems to create meaning or to give us clues as to the meaning. And then that information flows up to the cortex where we make sense of it. However, brain imaging studies found that there is 10 times more information flowing down to the thalamus from the cortex than, or down to the thalamus from the cortex than from the thalamus up to the cortex. What does that mean? It means we use information here to make predictions about what we're reading. We're always thinking a little ahead. We use information in the periphery to make guesses, and when our little eyeballs then move to that part, we either uh, reinforce or reconstruct our guess. All right, we use that for all of reality, but especially for meaning, uh, creating meaning with text or reading. We perceive reality in terms of stored information and images in the cortex. Remember, the cortex is essentially a memory machine. We use that stored information to make sense. We use what's in our head, our beliefs and our experiences to perceive reality and make sense out of reality. In this sense, scientists have found that memory never replicates reality. Our memories reinterpret reality. Right? You can never remember something totally objective. We are always using the information in our head to reconstruct or reinterpret reality. This is the transactive model, transaction between the data on the page and the head to create meaning. The phonological model does not account for this two-way flow of information, and the phonological model does not incorporate all three queuing systems. The transactive model does.